Unlock full GM programming power. How to use Topdon R-Link J2534 with DPS software. Hey everyone, I'm Hussein, and welcome back to Bobji Motors, your ultimate pit stop for everything related to car diagnostics, ECU programming, and smart automotive tools. Before we jump into today's deep dive, here's a quick but important note. This video is purely for educational and informational purposes. Everything you see here is designed to help technicians, learners, and enthusiasts understand automotive programming in a safe and responsible way. All trademarks belong to their respective owners, and we strictly follow fair use guidelines. Now, let's get into something that a lot of professionals have been asking about. How to use the Topdon R-Link J2534 with GM's DPS programming software. You might already know that the R-Link J2534 and R-Link X7 are compatible with GM tools like GDS2 and Tech2Win, but did you know they can also work beautifully with the powerful DPS programming suite? That's where the real magic happens, especially when you're trying to reprogram or flash modules like the Chevrolet Airbag Control Unit. So here's a question for you. Have you ever tried flashing a GM module offline using DPS? and run into connection or ID issues? If yes, stay tuned till the end, because I'm going to show you exactly how to make the R-Link J2534 work seamlessly with DPS for smooth, professional-level programming, all while keeping your workflow simple and reliable. Step 1. Preparing your setup. First things first, make sure you've got everything ready. Begin by opening the Topdon R-Link platform and downloading the GM driver. This driver ensures that your R-Link communicates properly with GM software environment. Think of it as installing the translator that lets your interface speak GM's programming language. Next, you'll need your offline programming files. These are the calibration or firmware files you'll be flashing into the ECU. Gather them into one folder so that DPS can easily locate them later. These files usually come in the form of .bin, .xml, or .cal formats depending on your project. Remember, these files are not provided by Topdon or Bobg Motors, so you'll need to source them responsibly through legitimate GM databases or service accounts. Step 2. Launching DPS Software Once your files and drivers are in place, go ahead and run the DPS programming software. From the main window, click on Program, then select Device Programming Tool. This will take you into the core section of DPS where you can configure the vehicle communication parameters. Now, set the vehicle architecture, select the appropriate protocol, and define the communication pins. After that, click on Get Controller Info. Here's a useful tip. You can actually determine the correct protocol pin numbers using GDS2. For instance, if GDS2 reads a fault for the electronic brake control module, the system will show you that the communication pins are 6 and 14. Similarly, the instrument cluster typically uses pin 1, and other modules will vary based on their network configuration. Knowing these details ensures your DPS session connects to the right controller every time. Step 3. Identifying the ECU The next step is identifying your ECU address or ID. You'll find this information in the ECU detail section or from the GDS2 data screen. For example, the electronic brake control module, often labeled as K17, will display its unique address ID number. Once you've entered the ECU address or ID in DPS, click Read Info to identify the connected controller. Wait for the software to finish reading, and when you see the vehicle information displayed, hit OK to confirm. This step is crucial because it verifies communication between DPS, the ECU, in your R-Link interface. Step four, connecting R-Link and importing calibration. Now that the ECU is identified, choose R-Link driver mode under connection type. This ensures DPS communicates directly through your top-down device. Click select cal, then navigate to your folder containing the calibration or flash files. Import the correct programming file. This could be a software update or a complete firmware reflash, depending on what the module needs. Once the file is loaded, hit Program to begin. You'll see the progress bar moving as DPS writes the new data into the ECU. This can take anywhere from a few seconds to several minutes, depending on the module size and vehicle architecture. 
Avoid disconnecting power or touching any cables during this process. Stability is key to avoiding corruption or incomplete flashes. When the programming process completes successfully, DPS will prompt you with a confirmation message. Click OK, and just like that, your module has been reprogrammed. Step 5. Final Checks and Verification After programming, it's a good practice to restart the ignition or power cycle of the module. You can use GDS2 or Tech2Win to verify that the updated calibration or firmware version now matches your intended file. This confirms that your flash session was successful and that the ECU is fully operational with the latest software. And there you have it. That's how you can use the Topdon R-Link J2534 with GM DPS software for professional grade module programming. From downloading drivers to importing calibration files, Every step helps you build confidence and precision in your diagnostic workflow. So, to answer the question I asked earlier, yes, the Topdon R-Link J2534 can handle GM DPS programming smoothly, as long as you follow the right steps and understand how to configure your communication pins and ECU IDs properly. Personally, I think Topdon has done an excellent job making this interface flexible enough for both general diagnostics and deep level programming tasks. It's affordable, reliable, and easy to integrate into professional workshops. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever used the R-Link J2534 or R-Link X7 for offline programming? Did you face any unique challenges or have a favorite trick that makes the process easier? Drop your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. I read every single one. Before you go, here's a fun fact. DPS, or Development Programming System, was originally created for GM engineers to test and calibrate modules before vehicles even hit production lines. So when you use it today, you're literally tapping into the same ecosystem that automakers use behind the scenes. If this video helped you understand the process better, help Bob G Motors grow by giving this video a big thumbs up. Let's aim for 10,000 likes and 1,000 comments. Hype this video up share it with fellow techs, and don't forget to hit subscribe for more detailed, real-world automotive tutorials. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Keep learning, keep exploring, and as always, happy diagnosing.